Hello everyone, my name is Sasa Chief and welcome back to Chief's Reactions. We got another one! <laughs> um, yeah, right after the Mongols, the English trailer dropped for Age of Empires 4. And I mean, I reviewed all of them before, so I don't think I'm gonna stop here at this point. So without further ado, I would say let's check out the English. Known for their military prowess and solid economy. Very distinctive. Very distinctive. I mean, uh, the, the English versions. Certainly the only ones without those attributes. <laughs> the English civilization is a defensive powerhouse and a resilient force on the battlefield in Age of Empires 4. Oh, are those longbowmen? Oh, the longbowmen. I love it. Benefiting from their unique network of castles bonus, English units gain an attack speed increase when invaders are detected, granting a home field advantage to fending off early attacks. This gives you space to explore your next move and build up a stronger early economy to later dominate the battlefield. Should an enemy make it into English territory, villagers could defend themselves with the use of a bow rather bow spam. Rather than engaging in melee combat. Okay, yes. Okay, it seems like um, the English seem to have a bit more... Um, well, it seems like the English have a more of a defensive playstyle as, as far as it seems. So, comparing to the others, so the Mongols are aggressive. Um, the English seem a bit more defensive, according to the whole bonuses with the castles and that they keep their range. And I guess the Holy Roman Empire is somewhere in between? Not entirely sure, but let's see what they're gonna say about it. Combat, helping to deter early attackers. Their town centers are also capable of firing more arrows than other civilizations, making it harder for small raiding parties to engage effectively. Okay, that's how they're probably gonna counter the very aggressive Mongols in the early game. Like it. The English military has access to the man at arms in the Dark Age and a unique archery unit in the Feudal Age, the robust longbowmen. Longbowmen do more damage <laughs> and have longer range than regular archers, but move. Wait, is that the man at the those are those are pikemen. Those are definitely pikemen. Um are those Yeah, the, the pikemen, longbowmen. I guess those are the men in arm. Seems a bit like it. Probably. Move slower and are more costly to train. When advancing to the feudal age, if the council wait, 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 wait. But move slower and are more costly to train. When advancing. Okay, this looks interesting. So, when you approach the next or advance into the next age, you have to pick or build a landmark. Abbey of King, Council Hall. Hmm, okay. So you get unique buildings according to each age. Which basically changes your playstyle as well. Huh. Okay. That, that's new. That's really new. Um, I can't think of a Another game that does that, just the top of my head. Um, I mean, the, the, for single player, but... No, no, I really can't think of another game doing that right now. I, I mean, there probably is one, but... If you know anyone, just uh, write it in the comments down below. Because I, I have a feeling there is something, but I just can't pinpoint it at this point. Advancing to the feudal age, if the council hall landmark is constructed, you can produce longbowmen from this landmark at twice the speed of the archery range, mm. making it easy to reinforce and diversify your military. Cheaper farms and the ability to collect food faster while within the influence radius of a mill. Wait, so. Cheaper farms and the ability to collect food faster while within. Okay, seems like the building with a grid. So they integrated a grid system to build. I don't know if that applies just for the farm or for all buildings. 
maybe that explains why they have streets and uh, that stuff. Um, it makes it for an aesthetic building, which I prefer, so I like that change a lot. Any influence radius per mill gives the English an economic advantage over some civilizations. This allows them to quickly meet their food supply needs and diversify their economy. The English Network of Castles feature provides solid defensive anchor points for your forces to push back invading armies. An opponent needs to think twice before bringing the battle to your doorstep, as the English civilization's ability to defend their lands are like no other. Their strong defensive structures and units bolstered by bonuses can easily lead to a swift defeat for the unprepared. So, they don't seem to have a special unit so far. At least it hasn't been introduced. But, they have a very defensive playstyle, as I said earlier. So, basically, for the English, it's build, advance, build, advance, and just hide behind your walls the whole time. So it's less advantageous to go in open field battles. Very interesting. Playing as or against the English requires careful planning to achieve victory. With unique ways of creating your own armor clad defense and battle strategy, it's up to you to utilize these advantages to prove triumphant on the battlefield. The thing is, they didn't go in much detail when it comes... I mean, I, I, comparing it to the Mongols, they didn't go that much into detail with the English. Um, it seems pretty much like your run-of-the-mill faction. Um, they don't have any hero units. Um, I mean, the Holy Roman Empire had the priest units. The Mongols had their... Uh, not the horse archer, some canate. I can't remember, but they had a special unit as well. Um, the English don't have that. Um, so maybe that's the disadvantage that they have. And maybe they also have less uh, armored units. So as they said, against armored units, they're probably going to have more issues. So it seems like the English is going to be weaker in late game. I mean just from hearing that. Probably more of a early mid game faction. Um, the Mongols are early game and Holy Roman Empire probably mid late game faction. Hmm. Uh, the thing is, I, I like it. I, I like the whole play style since I'm a more defensive uh, economic player as well. Um, so I, I like that change. Or I, the faction, um, and the longbowman spam is always amazing. So I'm not gonna say anything about that. Um, the thing is just I. Still, I I don't know. I I feel like the English something is a bit missing. Um. I mean, the, the whole roster of units, I mean, we have the, the men in arms, we have the longbow men, and probably some cavalry units. Um, in, in general, the Age of Empires 4 seems to have less units in total. Um, and the fact they don't have a hero unit doesn't make it much better. So, it really seems like the English, the, the focus is just on building up your defenses. Which is amazing while you still have stone and resource, like all the resources on the map, but at some point you're just gonna run out. Uh, it doesn't seem like your units are that strong to actually be a good counterpoint against attacking enemies, except for, yeah, if you hide, hide behind the walls. Um, I'm, I'm very interested how are they gonna face, like, how will the English or the, the faction? Um, hold himself up against, let's say, the Mongols or the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I think the, in the Chinese and India were other faction. No, not Ch no, 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 no. It, was, it was the Chinese. I think it was India or something with India. Um, if I would have to put my finger on it, I would say India or whatever the name was, it's probably going to be a late game faction as well, just to basically balance it out. So we have 
the Mongols early game, the Brit the English as an early mid game, and in my opinion, the Holy Roman Empire as mid late game faction. So I guess we're gonna have another mid game or strong late game faction as well, which would make actual sense. Um when it comes, yeah. I mean, it, it looks more polished, that's for sure. The trailers look way more polished compared to the beginning, so that's a huge plus. Um, as I already said in my Mongols uh, review, it looks better and I get my hopes up too. So if they keep on going like that, I I think it's going to be fine. Maybe, I mean, the whole thing is gameplay is always different than the trailers. That's just how it is. So um, at this point, I would say there's... Um, Cautious optimism. Yeah, I, I think that hits it pretty well. Cautious optimism. So far, um, some points that I basically criticized uh, in the beginning, they're done. Like the scaling issue is, it's went, it got much better, and also the animation of the unit and other few things got a lot better. So at least in that regard, I can't really say much about it anymore. Um, yeah, I'm curious what's gonna come out. I mean, the game, I think it's gonna be released on the 28th of October, so they still have 14 days. I don't expect big changes until then, unless they're gonna delay the game again. But, um, let's see. Um, I really don't know what they're gonna do about it. But yeah, either way, if you like what you saw, uh, if you agree with me or disagree with me, what... Whichever it is, just please let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And of course, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I wish you a wonderful day and goodbye.